I'm so excited for this series, but I have been putting it off for so long. There are sex scenes in this book and I just don't like them. And I woke up to Wormageddon. I woke up to a Poonami. Once again, this book has lulled me into a false sense of security and then slapped me in the face with something really dramatic. <laughs> Everybody, this has been a long time coming, but I'm finally gonna be reading the Greenbone Saga. It is, what is the month? It's June, Whatever-thon has started, so I'm also participating in Whatever-thon. And this series has been on my TBR since, what month did I try and read this? Was it March, April? I don't know, but it's been a long time and I haven't started, but I'm finally, finally getting around to it. I'm really excited. I'm also really scared. If you didn't see last week's vlog, or don't follow me on any of the social media. We also just adopted a puppy. So, I mean, I have time off like I've purposefully made it so that I have time to be with the puppy and help her through like the roughest part of the training process which is obviously like when she's adjusting to her new home so I do have time but she is a hands-on experience so I don't know how much time I'm actually gonna get to read. I'm so excited for this series but I have been putting it off for so long because I've been told I'm gonna love it. I've assumed I'm gonna love it. I don't know who Hilo is but apparently by the time I finish this first book I'm gonna be calling him daddy. So I'm really excited to get stuck in but I'm also incredibly nervous. So I do make a series of vlogs called like I read the blank series in a week. That is not going to be one of these. It kind of is because it, it is going to be included in the series, but I'm not pushing myself to read this in a week because this is the smallest book at like 500 and nearly 500 pages and they increase in size up to the last one, which is like 750. This vlog will also be no spoilers, so don't worry about that. If you would like to watch it, we're going to do it like a standard reading vlog. I'm just reading this entire series and a little bit about what it's about. So I don't know too much about it. I know it's an urban fantasy. I know it's on an island and I know that it's about two rival gangs that are fighting for the control of Jade which is a valuable substance that I think it's like a drug that enhances magic. I'm assuming because people said that I love it that we're gonna have some grey morality in here, um, maybe some found family. I think that we're gonna have some high stakes. I think Fonda Lee isn't gonna pull their punches and I'm just I'm excited to get stuck in. So the last thing I guess I have to cover before we start is that I'm participating in whatever thon so I haven't looked what prompts books will fit until I've actually read them so we will recap at the end but whatever thon is a month-long readathon where you can read whatever you want it doesn't really matter what genre all of the prompts are not necessarily vague there's a couple that are more specific but they are kind of like spanning all genres so you're not locked into anything specific and there are four teams I'm a co-host for the Shelf Slayer team each team has a bingo board most of the prompts are the same with five specific ones to each team and you just complete the bingo board throughout the month. What I will say though is that I'm definitely counting this for the host favourite prompt because I believe that this is one of Sandra's favourites so thank you very much Sandra for putting that on your favourites list because that is always one. Like any prompt that makes me read something more specific is guaranteed to be the one that I either do last or just don't do at all so Sandra I appreciate it. Pretty. Hello beautiful. Hello gorgeous girl. Hello. Hello, no chewing. Be a good girl. Be a good girl. Are you tired yet? Okay, Brie, this is your opportunity for some premium good girl behavior. You think you can do that? Oh, there we go. Um, oh my god, so. let go. Let go. Oh my god. Please, somebody take this away from me.
Good morning. Morning. What have you been doing? I can see from the floor here that you've been destroying a black bag like your daddy said you were. Come on. Sit. Sit. Good girl. You come in, Ham. Yeah, I got her. Sit. Good girl. So now that we've had some good girl content, it is time for some best boy content because this vlog has very kindly been sponsored by Happy and Polly. If you don't know who Happy and Polly are, I think you might do because you will have seen the stuff around but maybe not known where it's from. But they are a pet store. They do make things for dogs and cats. They've kindly sent me a couple of cat items today. I did not have a dog when they reached out to me. Otherwise, um, we may have got some more Brie content in here as well. But we have two items here for Hammy Ham. Like I said, they do make things for dogs so you can have like dog beds they have chew toys they have bowls harnesses that kind of stuff but the truly amazing stuff that they sell is cat trees that are a work of art i did not choose a cat tree for myself simply because ham has a cat tree and he doesn't really use it so while the cat trees that happy and polly make are absolutely stunning and i would love one i wanted something that he would actually utilize so there is going to be a link down in my description box to happy and polly and if you use the code becca10 at checkout you will get a discount on your order and then they do like free shipping over 69 dollars as well so let us crack into these and see what we have i'm really excited to see these ham is um like he plays he plays with toys and he also does zoomies and like he chases things on sticks but the thing that he truly truly loves to do and he spends a lot of time doing is scratching. We already have a couple of scratch posts for him but we can always do with more because of how much he does scratch and luckily he doesn't scratch my furniture. He is a very good boy and he only scratches the things that he's allowed to. So I thought we'd get a couple of more scratch items for him. So this one is, oh my god it's got like fake grass around the bottom but we have a scratch post that is mushrooms and I'm gonna assemble this. Oh my god I'm so excited. Okay, so this took me all of a minute and a half to assemble and I am obsessed with this. It looks so cool. I did try and encourage him to play. He's sat over here, um, but he's not feeling it at the minute. So I'm gonna see if we can introduce him to it a little bit later on so i have no doubt that he's gonna play with that because he knows like what his scratch posts are and he loves them this one is a little bit different it is a scratch item once again but i feel like convincing him to get into this one and use it is going to be a little bit more difficult but i wanted to take a risk on something you know so this one if you can see on the box is a cat bathtub but here we are okay it's not like we're not gonna try and bathe him because that sounds like I'm pretty much asking to lose my arms. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. This is amazing. I am obsessed. Okay, so the reason why I wanted this is because inside it's a scratch pad and we have you know that carpet that's kind of like corrugated like cardboard and it's got like ridges in it we have that down in the kitchen and we've been meaning to take it up pretty much since we moved now that we've got the pup and the puppies in the kitchen destroying the carpet even more we are going to be taking it up soon but i don't want him to start scratching other things like the rugs and carpets that we don't want damaging so i thought we'd get him this and see if he will utilize it but it's a bathtub and so yeah throughout this vlog i'm going to introduce ham to the couple of items that we've got here today from happy polly i'm really excited about this one i love it and we'll see if we can get him to use this but a big thank you to happy and polly for sponsoring this video i will leave the link to these two items as well as the happy and polly website down in my description box and don't forget that you can use the code becca10 to get yourself an additional discount so i guess we should talk books i'm not super far into this actually i'm not even a third of the way through i'm on page 150 exactly nobody told me like obviously 
obviously I knew that a puppy was hard work. But when, when, like, when we talk about Labradors, okay, people say about Labradors, like, oh, they're so sweet, they're so intelligent, they're so easy to train, they're an ideal first dog. Nobody told me about the short attention span and the need to put everything inside of their minds. Like, I've had puppies, I've had puppies growing up, and I will admit, like, I wasn't doing the lion's share of the work with the puppies. I was getting a lot of the fun stuff, you know, the playtime, the cuddles, but she definitely chews more than any dog I've ever had and also needs more stimulation and has like a shorter attention span than any dog that I've ever had so she's definitely a hands-on experience right now but anyway I'm reading Jade City I'm 150 pages in and I am really enjoying it it's a little bit different than I thought it would be because like even though I knew going into this that it was urban fantasy I feel like I underestimated how modern it would be because even though like when things are set in a city and when they're urban fantasy like if we take House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas for example that is urban fantasy and they have like social media and phones and all of that kind kind of stuff but they have like different ways of electricity and like some historical elements whereas this has I feel like a lot of modern technology I don't know it just feels weird because thinking about it House of Earth and Blood and this they're the same in that it's in a fictional city and they have things that we have today but I don't know it just feels weird in this one I feel like I expected it to be more high fantasy even though I knew going into it that it was urban fantasy so we are following I think we're only following the members of one of the clans which is the No Peak clan and from what I can gather about I think it was like two generations ago the main characters Lan, Hilo, Shay and Andy. Their father, like Andy's kind of adopted, but the rest of theirs father and grandfather were part of this war between the place where they're from and other countries I think that were trying to colonize their island and um, they used to all be one clan but because of differences between the main character's grandfather and the leader of the other clan the clan split into two and now these two clans are the biggest clans in the city and they have control or the majority of the control of the jade now jade isn't a substance this is literal jade like the it's a stone isn't it it's not a crystal it's a stone and they wear it some people wear it embedded into their body some people wear it on like bits of jewelry and if you have the ability to harness jade you can use it to like increase your speed your strength your dexterity and things like that it, it's reminded me in the magic system in that kind of way it feels very mistborn in the types of abilities that you get from jade but there is also a drug that has come onto the market that allows other people to harness jade because it is only the people from this island that can currently use these abilities but this drug allows other people to gain a tolerance for jade and also are able to use it so the clan that we're not following the are they the one mountain clan they are trying to keep control of the jade by also controlling this drug and allowing foreigners to use it whereas the no peak clan don't want jade to spread like that they want the advantage and the control and also the drug is quite unstable and dangerous i mean jade is quite unstable and dangerous by itself actually but this drug is even more so so they're trying to control it in that aspect and the two clans are coming to blows there's tension between them anyway because the um one mountain clan has just changed leadership so now the no peak clan don't know Quite where they stand with them anymore because they had like a little bit of a ceasefire going on there is a distance between the writing and the characters i feel like i don't feel like i'm like rooting for the characters yet i feel like there's some distance there and um, the one criticism i kind of have of this is very minor but there are sex scenes in this book and i just don't like them because i don't mind if you don't have sex scenes and like things are fade to black like that's fine but i just feel personally like my personal opinion on sex scenes is that they should be erotic or they shouldn't exist i don't like clinical descriptions of sex scenes they don't have any like emotional feeling it's very much like he did this and then he did that and he put this here kind of sex scene it just makes me feel real weird obviously like i'm talking about romantic type like sex scenes not when we're discussing like descriptions of like sexual assault but if it's like a romantic type sex scene make it erotic or just don't include it because clinical descriptions 
descriptions of sex just make me feel really really weird that's where we're at i don't feel like i'm 150 pages in which is a, a decent amount but i don't feel like i'm feeling one way or another aside from that i'm really enjoying it i'm finding it compulsively readable which i mean for me and fantasy at the minute is it's been a struggle so that is a good sign and considering i've decided that i'm not gonna work out like i need to i know you guys can't hold me accountable because by the time you actually watch this it's going to be way after the date that i'm filming this but it's 8 30 p.m now i'm not working out because then i gotta shower and then like the day is nearly over and i just want to read my book so i'm gonna feel bad about it but i'm holding myself accountable to get my shit together and get back onto my normal like food plan and also workout schedule from tomorrow i got a box this says on the address label that it's from Waypoint Books, which makes me believe it's from Hannah, who posted on, I can't remember if it was like my birthday unboxing video or um, my Instagram post on my birthday, saying that she'd gotten me something from Etsy and it hadn't arrived yet. I'm really excited to crack into this because it feels like substantial. Thank you very much, Hannah. I mean, I'm assuming it's Hannah because Hannah has a bookshop called Waypoint Books. I will link that in Hannah's YouTube channel as well down in um, the description box if you would like to check her out. She is honestly just so thoughtful. Oh my God, I don't know. Oh, Hannah. This is too much. Like what? Oh my god. This is unnecessary. So we have a card. It says, happy very belated birthday. I wanted to get you something cute from Etsy, but then it took a hundred years. But it gave me enough time to realise your Gotoba mug was still in. Oh no! I hope you're having a chill time post birthday at Amber Cobblethon, Hannah. Thank you. So this is one of the um Gotoba mugs from last year, which I also completely forgot about. Oh my god. I like these mug boxes. So this was from last year's Gothtober. I really liked this mug. And then we also have, we have two things wrapped. What is this? Is this a, I feel like I know what this is, but I'm also, I also feel like I'm partaking in some dumb victory. I'm gonna see what else we have first before I think about what that could be. This feels like a book and this is a squishy. So let's do the squishy. This goes in the light, I thought so. It's gonna, oh, this is gonna be cool. I love these things. Resan's tattoo parlor tattoo is for a bargain on it. And then when you light it up, which I can't do right now because I don't think I have a USB plug here. When you plug it into something, the light shines through and you can see the design on it. That is so cool. Thank you so much, Hannah. And what do we have in the mysterious puzzle. I said that the same way you say like the um what a very distinguished gentleman. This wrapping paper is really nice. Very on brand for me as well. Navy and gold. Oh the devil makes three by Tori Bovolino. I've heard good things about this. Is this about a library? Yes this is about two students who I don't know if they work in the library or one works there one's just there and they really don't like each other but they accidentally release the devil from a book and then they have to hunt him down and get him back into the book. So thank you so much Hannah for the gifts. I love them. Um, as usual, you are too kind. And I'm really excited to go plug this light in. No one at home when I sleep. Put me out on our couch. Throw me in the dark house. Feel like we're stuck on a leash. Barely left the ground floor. I should be getting out more. The way that things are going, all the cracks are started showing. Girl, it feels like we've been growing apart But what if that was something I could give you That would jump in and fill every hole I made in your heart Maybe we should get a dog Do some cute shit in the park when we get depressed Make him wear some Saint Laurent Yeah, take some pics and put them all on the internet Yeah, I know things happen hard so let's make a new Maybe we should get a dog Nothing is easy to fix But baby girl, the fact is We need a distraction And I know you're so tired of my tricks So let's throw something new in the mix Maybe we should get a dog Do some cute Good shit morning, in the park. everybody. It is It's not even 9am yet Hey, show everybody your trowels 
Look at your trowel. How do I hit me in the face with it? I need to give you guys an update on Geo City because it's been a while. It's taken me quite a while to read this. I'm now neat. Well, I, I say I'm nearly done. I'm 380 pages in. I have 115 pages to go, which I'm hoping to read today. For the longest time, I didn't really understand like what the point of this book could be. Like the plot is that these two gangs are going to war, or like as far as I'm aware at this point still. The main events of the plot is that these two clans are going to war but it was kind of just like a very slow progression like we'd start off with like minor instances that could be played off as possibly not the other clan aggravating the no peak clan up until like things get a little bit more purposeful and a little bit more obvious that it is signs of the clans fighting each other but it was still very much just like it was just progressing i was just i was enjoying it because i like the writing and i like the atmosphere and i like the setting of this but in terms of the plot nothing was really surprising me it was just kind of it was just moving you know and i was just reading it there was nothing really going on nothing keeping me turning those pages and then just before the 300 page mark things really start to pick up and there's this like big pivotal event that like accelerates the plot and since that moment I've been enjoying this a lot more so I read that yesterday and I blasted through 120 pages last night which is the fastest that I've been reading this book so I'm definitely enjoying it a lot more now I've been told that I'm gonna love Hilo and at this point I mean yeah he's okay but I just I'm still feeling a distance between myself and the characters because of the writing like I feel like this is a more plot driven story but in a way that I don't mind because you guys know I don't always get on with plot driven I feel distance between myself and the characters through the writing I don't feel like this writing style is one that lends itself to attachment to characters which is sad because for it to be a new favorite series for me which like i'm assuming that the series is going to be i've always assumed that i'm gonna love this series i need to be attached to the characters and right now i'm finding them interesting and i'm liking the character development but i'm not especially rooting for any of them i'm not feeling any kind of emotion regarding them so that's what i'm looking for really in like the second i was, was gonna say the second half we're in like the last quarter now today i have just a couple of things that i need to get done this morning i need to ring up the insurance company to get brie added onto that i started sorting it last friday but i want to add her onto the same policy as hamilton so i get a little bit of a discount and for some reason it's, it's not possible to do online so i have to call them so i've then been putting it off for this week because i hate talking to people and then Panic at the Disco tickets go on sale at 10am and why are they so hard to get? I tried for Manchester stand-in tickets in both pre-sales and I was not successful and then I checked all the other locations and you can get them anywhere else just not Manchester so um yeah this is my final attempt to panic tickets and I feel a lot of pressure because I'll be going with Curtis and Ryan and last time we went to see Panic on the Pray for the Wicked tour Curtis was really sick and he adored that album and he was so so excited to see Panic um, and he was ill and he couldn't go so I'm feeling the pressure to get the ticket so that he can finally see Panic um, but after that I think I'm gonna do some sprints with my patrons and get this finished for a little bit later in the day than I wanted it to be I got a hair in my mouth <laughs> great start it's impossible for me not to have hairs in my mouth these days I don't even know if it's gone I don't even know if it's attached to my own head it's a little bit later in the day than I wanted it to be we we're almost at four o'clock but I feel like you can tell that I caught a bit of sun today when I finished Jade City I'm still doing Patreon sprints I don't know what's taking me so long it's not a slow read in terms of pacing it is very heavily political and one of the things about this I gave it four stars and one of the things about it that I feel like is what's making it feel a little bit odd to me is that a lot of the things that happen like the actual events you don't necessarily see on page so it'll start a chapter where like a, a building's been taken by the opposite clan and then the start of the next chapter like one of the generals is dead but you, like you don't actually see any of these events happen you just really focus on the call family who are the leaders of the clan as they're kind of reacting to everything now one of them Hilo is the horn so he is more hands-on he's more he is the general essentially so with him you'll get a few more action scenes but Shay is like more into business and political maneuvering Lan is like essentially a peacekeeper he has the responsibility of the clan he's trying to do what's best for the clan so a lot of this book is political and it just I don't know it feels weird like i wasn't as into the site expected it to be i did really enjoy it and i do really like the characters and i think what you can tell about this book is that fonda lee has put a lot of thoughts and a lot of work into it it's very well thought out it's very detailed it's interesting i would say it's relatively engrossing like when i was in it like i was in it but the way that the plot is delivered 
and the way that though we're not seeing all of these things play out feels like it's lessening the impact for me and as i've said more than once i do feel like there is a distance between me and the characters because of the writing style it reminds me a little bit of george rr R. martin's writing style how it's very like factual in telling you what is going on but without influencing your opinions like i don't feel like i'm feeling the events of this book with the characters and that's why this wasn't five stars for me but i did really enjoy it and the end of this did not go as i expected it to so i'm excited to see what's going to happen in jade war which i am going to be picking up pretty immediately i'm just need to i didn't have long left of the sprint i've got like five minutes left but this is obviously going to be my next read i am i have been listening along to the audiobook partially with this definitely would recommend the audiobook for this series depends like what i'm doing with the dog because sometimes like if i'm reading and i can't see her i have to be able to hear her <laughs> to know what she's doing so like for today i haven't listened to the audio which is sad because it is a really good audio and i will be doing the same for this like listening along where i can but otherwise physically reading it so i am participating of course in whatever thon this month and this will fill through the prompts off the bingo board i will put the bingo board here so you can see how i'm progressing but i use this one for host favorite because it is one of Sandra's faves and I also used it for a book on a previous TBR and a book from my favorite genre. One down, two to go. They're getting progressively larger as we go along but I am gonna go make a start in Jade One. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I did not read very much yesterday. I spent the morning and afternoon cleaning the entire downstairs of my house, which I feel so much better now that that's done. And then in the evening, a couple of Curtis's friends came around. So I read like one chapter. I'm not very far into this. Still under the 100 page mark. I'm now on chapter 11, which is page 92 and i want to get some reading done today so i have i feel real productive i got up this morning i did a workout i've had a shower i've now prepared myself for the day i'm going to be joining it's the 48 hour readathon for whatever thon this weekend and brie what are you doing stop chewing on things i couldn't join yesterday obviously because i was doing other things but i'm going to be joining maddie sprints very soon and i've been having a bit of an anxiety slip you know like nothing too bad nowhere near as bad as i was like this time last month or anything but not feeling 100% so I have been listening along to the audiobook for Jade War as I did with Jade City but I think I'm gonna slow my audiobook down a bit so I'm on 2.1 speed at the minute while I'm physically reading along we're gonna take it down to 1.7 what helps me when I'm anxious is doing something that occupies both my brain and my hand now this has always been a little bit of a struggle for me because I don't listen to a whole ton of audiobooks and they have to be the right kind of audiobook where I can like divert my attention two ways but I am this is a really good audiobook book so i think that i'm gonna be fine following along and why is everything you own so noisy what are you doing where are you oh she's so big um i've gotten down all of the jigsaws from subscription boxes that i keep saying that i'm going to assemble and then never do so we have four of them they're only small i normally do like 1000 plus piece jigsaws and these i think are 100 each so they're not going to take me a great deal of time but they're going to occupy me at least for this afternoon and it's not like a super big commitment of starting a 1000 piece puzzle that will probably take me like a few days to complete and then if i do finish them i have a wardrobe upstairs of 1000 piece puzzles that i can be cracking on with if it's not working out like if i can't pay attention to my audiobook a great deal and do a jigsaw at the same time i can just stop after i've done one and go back to reading along physically while i listen to the audio so yeah that is my plan for the afternoon pretty chill sunday honestly just cleaning my entire house yesterday made me feel so much better because now i'm not sat here like oh i should be doing this because like i did everything that i should have done and it feels good i could work today but it's a sunday and i'm not so we're reading instead chapter 17 i'm at the bit like just before the first interlude which i'm about to start i'm still doing jigsaws while i listen to the audiobook oh my god you know what 
I am starting to stand Hilo. Like, I'm a big fan. Like, he does. I'm gonna say what needs to be done because you could argue that, like, sometimes he takes things a little bit too far. I appreciate his ruthlessness because when we have ruthless characters in books, I actually want them to be ruthless and Hilo is delivering on that. Also, apologies for the squeaking in the background. Brie has a dragon. This book so far, it, it's heavily political and the politics are proven to be just a little bit too much right now because, like, where it is political, it is, like, so, so dense in the politics. And there is like so much going on within like the clan politics, the politics of KCON. And also like we're in this one, we're getting a lot more of like the politics of the wider world as well. But I'm growing more attached to some of the characters. Hilo being the main one also and in. Jay, I like, I'm not overly attached to her, but um, she's... Oh. So we had a chaotic moment there when Curtis came home and Brie got really excited. But as I was saying, um, I am getting more attached to Shay as we're seeing more of her like personal life, I want to say, and also seeing her grow into the role that she has in this book. But she's not like my number one right now. But like there's characters being introduced, there's like kids being introduced that I'm, I feel like the domestic side of this plot where it comes into the family because it is very closely tied to the family of the No Peak Clan is making me grow more attached to them see in the second book where i wasn't in the first so yeah i'm enjoying it a lot i need to pause brie stop chewing on my chair she's like Kurt is coming home really excited her. So now I'm struggling. We were having a nice calm moment before. But um, yeah, I'm gonna pause my jigsaw in and listen to my audio because I need to make Brie some food and also make some food for myself. But hopefully I will get back to this final jigsaw. I actually think I have two more book box jigsaws one is right on the top shelf of my wardrobe and i couldn't reach it without ladders and i just really i have four here i didn't need to get that one but now i do i think i have one in the library as well so i mean i don't know if i'm going to continue later because i don't like to do things like this without natural light but um brie she's chewing my shoe as it's on my foot stop that i just need you to see what's going on down here like this this is going on down here but yeah we'll see what i'm doing tonight but i'm nearly on page 200 of the book so i've made significant progress and i'm real happy with that i just wanted to show you guys all of my completed jigsaws from today i did do all five so we have this one's monster severity we have caraval um i think this one's weak on the flame these two are fairy loop um and these three are illuminate and then we have lord of the rings and cruel prince this is a obscenely large bag of dog food that i bought didn't realize 10 kilos would be so large and we have literally nowhere to put it. So it's it's there right now, but I am gonna move it because as a special treat, I have gotten a 1000 piece puzzle on the puzzle board out. So this is what I'm gonna be tackling next. I really love these puzzles, by the way. I have quite a lot of them. The Linda Jane Smith cat ones. I think she does dog ones as well, but I only have cats, but I might collect some of the dog ones. I just pick them up from charity shops when I find them. I feel like my obsessive jigsaw collecting is specifically like training for this moment so that I was ready for right now because my battery died there, but as I was saying, it's a lot later now. It is almost midnight, but I am still in the kitchen. And why, why am I still in the kitchen, you may ask? because I'm not going to bed anytime soon. Brie has diarrhea. <laughs> She's had diarrhea for a day or so, so we've um, we've dewormed her in case it was worms. Turns out it is worms, I'm not going into it too much here, but when I say after we wormed her today, I know I said dewormed, it's just worms. She's been wormed today. She passed the biggest worm I've ever seen. I'm used to tiny little thread worm that's not this is not one of those it's a round worm i think i figured out after much internet research so with the wormer and the worms she she has she has some diarrhea it's been 45 minutes since her last poop and the one before that was 45 minutes ago i'm hoping we're coming to not the end because i think it'll be at least like going into tomorrow yet but i hope we're coming to a, a calmer phase with this she has she is still like fast asleep right now but i just want to get a bit of sleep tonight i don't want to be sat here all night taking her out to the toilet every 45 minutes but i guess this is the less glamorous side of um pet ownership so yeah, I'm gonna start my 1000 piece puzzle. I don't imagine I'm gonna get very far because I feel like I'm gonna get very tired very quickly.
summer rain on a window. Watch the time float on. The worms are now gone. I, that night that I last checked in with you, I slept three hours that night. I waited until Brie was settled. I thought I'd be able to get like a couple of hours rest. Set my alarm for just three hours and I woke up to a Wormageddon. I woke up to a Poonami. <laughs> not a great time and i need my sleep to like be a functioning human that's not like riddled with anxiety so then i had a rough day after that and then i have two dentist appointments this week as well and as you guys may know i'm not a big fan of the dentist i haven't been feeling my best and i haven't been reading a whole ton but i'm now just past the 300 page mark and i i kind of wish that i'd made this video spoilery just because I tend to be with this book, I am enjoying it more than Jade Sissy. I tend to be like just listening to it, you know, having a good time, a lot of politics, a lot of stuff going on. World is opening, characters are like living their little domestic bliss lives. And then we'll get to the end of, we'll call it the end of a section because every so often we have an interlude, which to me kind of marks the end of a section, even though it isn't written as such in the book. It's just like first interlude, second interlude, etc. But we get to the end of a section and something happens that just has me shook that I really wish I could talk about so I'm on like page 308 something like that just past the second interlude but once again at the end of that part just before the second interlude something happened that got me really excited and that's kind of where I put it down last night I am at part way through the chapter that follows that and I'm really excited to continue so um while I'm waiting for Ryan and Curtis to load up Fortnite I'm going to listen to just a little bit I have been working on Jigsaw as well cracked out the 1000 piece one probably about I want to say I'm a little over halfway through but um i'm enjoying myself just listen to my audit these audiobooks you know i've said it before i think i'm filming well i know that i'm filming an audiobook recommendation video tomorrow this series is definitely going to be in it because oh my god so good i love it so much it's very rare that i can follow along properly to a fantasy audiobook but these are just phenomenal and i'm loving them and i'm also at the point now where i'm so obsessed with Hilo. is he misunderstood i don't know okay because yes He's murderous. Yes, he's morally questionable. But he cares about the people that he cares about so much, which I'm finding it to be like a really endearing quality. And I think like, like I said before, the level of domesticity in this book is really helping me to finally become attached to the characters. I will say I'm not enjoying Anton's storyline. I'm assuming that it's going to be like part of the rest of the plot at some point. But right now I just don't really care because the stuff that's happening with Shay and Hilo is much more exciting. What's the number six of the week is complete. And now we're going to be moving on to puzzle number seven, which is the Mad Catter's Tea Party. When am I going to stop? Like seriously though, like at what point do I stop just taking apart jigsaw puzzles and getting a new one out? Because I feel like this is getting to be a little bit of an addiction. I don't feel like we're anywhere near that point yet anyway, because I'm only like just just passed halfway through Jade War, and I have the entirety of Jade Legacy to go, so I think we could be seeing like two, three more puzzles before I'm done. So I just read at chapter 45 and 46. Oh my god, once again, this book has lulled me into a false sense of security and then slapped me in the face with something really dramatic. Mmm. Oh my god. I'm only on page 450 as well. So I have 140 pages of this book left and I'm like, what else can happen in this book? Because you would assume that the further you get to the end, the more dramatic it becomes. Unless it's like a Game of Thrones thing. Do you know how like, unlike all of the TV shows, Game of Thrones had the big dramatic thing happen in episode 9 and then episode 10 would be kind of like more normal. Maybe it's doing that. Or maybe it's just lulling me into a false sense of security again. Or maybe we're just gonna have a landslide of drama until the end. I'm not sure but it has definitely taken a turn that I wasn't expecting and I am once again pleased, I guess. Please is a weird word, but I'm enjoying once again her ruthless the calls are. Cool it blows a memento as I fall behind. I'm so sorry for dreaming about the future. Stop attacking mommy. Mommy loves you. <laughs>
take apart all the good things Stripped away what's there to do So many times I try But I just don't remember just finish Jade War and oh my god the end of this was so good like you can 100% say that I am attached to the characters at this point it took me a while to get here but throughout the was it like about a quarter or a third of the way into this I realized that like yes I am getting attached to the Cole family and I'm actually really scared about what's to come because I was talking to Aaron I think it was last night and she said that even though I didn't think I was attached to people she's known other people to say that and then for the end of the next book to break them. I have had a prediction, obviously this video is no spoiler, so I can't tell you who my prediction is, but from the very beginning, I had a prediction that one character wasn't gonna see it through to the end. And I, I do feel like that is gonna be a thing. The sad thing about this book is that we're following the calls, and I don't know whether it's just that they gloss over their successes or something, but I feel like they never quite achieve what they're trying to. The mountain will succeed against them, and you'll see that and the repercussions on the call family, but I don't think you ever really see them succeed. Like, I feel like even when they are succeeding, it's like a double-edged sword, so like they'll achieve what they want, but there will be some sort of consequence or something that like happened while they were achieving this thing so I'm like why are we following them because at this point like I don't even know whether they're gonna come out on top I don't know whether the end of this series is going to be triumph for the no peak clan I, I I can't say because of how terrible they all seem to be doing at all times so I give it four stars and there is still potential for Jade Legacy to be five because of how attached I am to the characters now. Essentially just throughout this one I wasn't quite at the point where I was truly like invested in them yet and the amount of politics in here like I love me a political fantasy but this is just so political. It's the kind of politics where you'll like be observing meetings talking about like businesses changing hands and shipping contracts and smuggling which does come into play when it comes to like events throughout the book but just for me personally it's a, just a tiny bit too political and I'm not as interested in those elements of the story but I do have high hopes still for book five I think in terms of buying this now because I bought this series assuming that I would love it and like the Illuminate special editions I would say that I don't regret buying the series at this point and I'm glad that I have them but I think if I'd have read the series beforehand I may not have bothered to invest in the special edition series because like they haven't been five star reads for me yet but um something about this series as well which might be why I'm not rating it five stars is that I feel like it's very barely a fantasy so it is essentially like a martial arts gangster style movie with the jade providing the only element of magic and while obviously the jade is the focal point of everything in this series because the whole reason that like this plot exists is because everybody's fighting over jade everybody wants jade even if people can't harness the powers of jade they're taking drugs which allows them to be able to use jade but the actual like what's actually happening in the series is either like political or clan wars or like the domestic lives of the calls their loyalty to the clan and how essentially blood runs thicker than water and how they'll do anything for the clan like that kind of thing it's very much like the focus of the plot is very much not fantasy i would say that the fact that jade is fantastical to me still plays very little part in this like you could substitute jade for something else that isn't fantastical and this series would kind of still like play out the same so um yeah it is fantasy but i would say that like the fantastical element of it is very minimal
so stressed. I am approaching the 300 page mark. I'm like 295 pages into Jade Legacy and the last 50 pages have been excruciating. Like the way that Fonda Lee dragged out that whole like event and aftermath of event that's just happened in the book was intense and unnecessary. I'm mad about it because I couldn't turn pages fast enough. It was one of those things where like I needed to know something even though I'm listening to the audiobook read along so like my pace is a little bit faster than if I was reading it physically because of the like unbroken concentration I guess the audiobooks give me it still wasn't fast enough and I was literally just so impatient to find out what happened so um I should really be going to bed now but I need to know like the rest of the resolution of this event because like you know at the beginning of this where I was like I'm not too into the characters like I'm not super attached and I thought that possibly my attachment was growing throughout the series definitely attached now can 100% confirm it and I need to find some sort of stopping point because it is nearly midnight so that I can go to bed oh my god what is this come here yes we got a new camera oh she pretty oh Hello, beautiful. Okay, so do we look any different? I feel like we look different. The viewfinder is on the other side and I just, I can't. Oh my God. Does this have like a built-in beautify setting on it or something? Because I feel like I'm looking really good in the viewfinder. I'm gonna have to check that out. It's been so long since I set up my like recording settings on my old camera. Like I don't even know what I'm supposed to be looking at on this one. I don't know if you guys will have noticed, but I edited a video with my headphones in the other day and I realized that there's a lot of static in my audio which goes back to when I filmed my House of Sky and Breath video and if you guys have seen that you will know that the audio towards the end was just destroyed. I don't really know what happened but I can't quite get it back to what it should be and it's just not good enough for the quality of videos like that I want to produce. It's like the end of an era because I've had my Canon since 2018. The majority of the videos on my channel were with my Canon and I'm a little bit sad about it and I had to make the decision to whether I was going to get just a new Canon or switch to Sony and I feel like a little bit of a traitor right now but essentially I just did not trust my Canon anymore with the audio issues that it was having so yeah it was time for an upgrade and this is different I want to try the oh this definitely has a beautify setting on it look how good I look this is wild hey babes it's quite a bit later in the day now I have filmed a video today it did take me quite a while though because essentially I didn't have anything prepared for tomorrow and I really just didn't want to film with my other camera because like I said I just don't trust it um so I was waiting for this one to arrive and I was really eager to film a video today so it took me the majority of the day because I was too impatient to charge the battery properly but I have also been putting off filming real like speaking updates for this vlog over the last couple of days so i have a little bit to talk to you guys about regarding jade legacy so i am 300 ish pages into it last night i pretty much got the answers that i was looking for and then went straight to bed but i'm really enjoying this one it actually covers quite a broad spectrum of time so like the first two books cover like a few years each and this one measures time in how long it's been since the start of the series essentially so right at the beginning i think we're six years into the clan war we're six years and one month into clan war at the beginning of this and then currently where i'm up to i think we are 14 years into the clan so i knew going into this that this book covered quite a large space of time and i believe it actually covers around 20 years in total but what i didn't realize is how quickly it would skip through the years so i'm not halfway yet and eight years have passed within the beginning of this book and I'm kind of wondering what the relevance is going to be because obviously I feel like it's it's kind of obvious I'm guessing that Fonda Lee must have intentionally made this 20 years like there must be something about what happens later in this book that makes it relevant that so much time has passed and that this hasn't all happened over the space of a handful of years so i'm really curious to figure out what that is i'm also incredibly nervous the more that i progress through this because i just truly don't believe that all of the characters are going to survive this series and at the moment we've had a few near misses already so i'm kind of like i'm on edge because i feel like one of these times it's not going to be a near miss it's actually going to be something fatal and i'm a little bit worried because i am attached at this point i truly realized how attached i was when i couldn't stop turning pages last night to try and figure out what had happened when everything had kind of gone to shit so yeah i i really do kind of want to finish this over the next couple of days i just seem to have been struggling to find 
like you know blocks of time to sit down and read because this is a big chunky book and I want to dedicate like a couple of hours in one sitting to it instead of dipping in and out like if I'm reading something like a romance or a thriller or a fantasy that isn't super dense I will sometimes just pick it up throughout the day and read a chapter then put it down and then pick it up again but with this it's the kind of book where you want to be sitting and reading like 50 100 page chunks at once and I just have been struggling to find the time to do that so because of all of the filming one of Curtis's friends came around earlier and I had a beer in the middle <laughs> Was filming that video so the last few minutes is quite different from the early few minutes but it's 11 p.m now i've just finished editing because i i kind of just wanted it done so that i have tomorrow not free because i have things to do but i didn't have to come back and finish the task that i started today so I'm gonna go get in bed. I'm gonna read hopefully for about an hour and we'll see where I get. I'm so nervous. I can't, this has been quite a long vlog, both in the length of the actual vlog and also the time that I've been filming it over. So um, yeah, it's taken me most of the month to read this series, but I've enjoyed it. I am enjoying it. And I'm just, I hope that that remains true throughout the second half of this book. Maybe we should get a dog. Do some cute shit in the park when we get depressed. Make him wear some Saint Laurent, yeah Take some pics and put them all on the internet, yeah I know things have been harder So let's make a new start with a four-legged therapist And all our problems will be gone, yeah Maybe we should get it. Good evening. I've had a little bit of a hair refresh this afternoon, which I'm really happy about because I was missing my fringe and I'm glad to have it back. But I gotta say, I truly did think that I would have finished this book in this series by now. But it seems that I'm taking my time with this final installment, which is fine because like it's a lot. It's a big book and there's a lot packed into it. So like it's, it's better, I guess, to take your time. But I'm on page 465, chapter 44. And honestly, I was nearly crying in the hairdressers earlier. We had the resurfacing I guess of a character that had kind of been absent from the story for a little while and the whole like resolution of what happened with that character and kind of why they resurfaced almost had me crying in the hairdressers and it's like a side character a prominent side character but not one that we spend a great deal of time with. I want to say that they're mainly like present in scenes but they're rarely ever the focus of a scene. I have like 250-ish pages of this book left, which I believe I've just been listening. I've left my phone over there. I was listening to the audio while I was brushing my teeth and also when I was doing some tidying this morning and just getting stuff done, you know? So I have listened to quite a bit today, but I have four hours and 44 minutes left. It's now 9.45, so I'm probably actually not gonna finish it tonight. And I'm going to Huddersfield tomorrow for Hella Megator to see Green Day Fallout Boy and Weezer, but to be honest, I'm not that bothered about Weezer. So I'm mainly going, I'm mainly going for Fallout Boy. Curtis is mainly going for Green Day. So there's a possibility that I may not be able to finish it tomorrow either which puts me a little bit of a predicament actually because i do not have a video scheduled for sunday because i assumed that this was going to be the one and i'm away from home tomorrow so i'm gonna have to pull something out of the bag on sunday morning and as of yet i have absolutely no idea what that's going to be so please wish me luck there but yeah i'm going to spend the majority of today of what i have left of the evening which let's be real is like two hours i'm reading some more of this and making another little dent in it. I think Aaron's doing sprints actually. So I'm gonna um, watch those and see how much we can get. Girl, it feels like we've been growing apart. Like been growing apart. But what if there was something I could give you that would jump in and fill every hole I made in your heart? Maybe we should get a dog. Do some cute shit in the park when we get depressed.
So I just finished chapter 50. I'm on page 560 now and you could say I'm upset. I didn't expect to cry really during this book. I knew that some dramatic like stuff was gonna happen but I didn't really expect to cry. But, oh my God, <laughs> I'm not okay. I'm hoping to finish this today. The end is nearly in sight. I have 150-ish pages left, which translates to, well, let me get you a, a timestamp. Two hours and 49 minutes. So I think it's only, it's not even 4 p.m. yet. So I think that that's definitely doable. So I am about to start singing you guys a very different tune to what I was singing at the beginning of this vlog because I finished Jade Legacy. Oh my god, I was devastated at the end of this. This book had me crying, I think three times because I think I cried at the, like you guys saw around the chapter 50 mark. I cried very close to the end and I think I shed a couple of extra tears like just as the book was wrapping up because there was still, I think about 20 pages left after the part like sobbing but this one is also going to be four stars it's very high four stars there's just a couple of things that i don't really love about this series which is why i'm gonna start singing a very different tune to at the beginning of the vlog i love the calls when i was reading jade sissy i was saying that i was struggling to become attached to the characters and that definitely was not an issue throughout this last book my favorite favorite part of this series is the calls and is the family elements and my least favorite thing about this series, the reason why I didn't give the second or third books five stars is because I don't actually like the plot very much. I did say earlier on that this is like a mafia plot line, it's about the clan wars, and you could swap the jade for something else in this series. You could swap it for something like oil, like diamonds, coal, something like that, and it wouldn't actually change the plot of this story. It would pretty much just make the action scenes a little bit less flashy. So it's just not a fantasy plot line. Essentially, it's definitely a fantasy book, but I think that this book talks more about culture and politics on a worldwide scale and what happens to culture when more people have access to it and whether more people should have access to your culture, whether that's more beneficial to you or whether it kind of like is stealing from your culture and puts things that belong to your culture in the hands of people who shouldn't have them, if that makes sense. There was a lot in this series, especially in this last book, like it, it was opening slowly throughout the course of the series to become more and more international. But there were things in this book specifically about like buying a movie studio and gradually making more and more successful movies to make the clan more rich and more powerful. 
and it was just those elements of the story that I really just was not invested in. But anything that kind of brought it back to the calls and the power dynamics and the domesticity when we started getting children involved in here and we started planning more time and we got to see the main characters who were in their early 20s at the beginning of this series mature and grow into different roles when we saw them becoming aunts and uncles and parents and when we saw them like start to lose their youth a little bit. Their lifestyles change, how much they're able to do kind of changes. Hilo especially really grows as a character throughout the series and those were the elements that I truly truly loved. So a couple of content warnings for this series that is um, just like a little bit of torture throughout here but I wouldn't say that anything especially graphic. We do have abortion which I'm triggering only because it's traumatic for some people not because there's anything wrong with abortions and fuck you America. Also content warnings for substance abuse because the jade does have some of the properties of a drug and then there is also a drug in here as well and then there's also like violence in general but also things like gun violence in here. This vlog has taken me a lot longer to make than I thought it was going to. I was aiming for two weeks. I think we're on like possibly three to four weeks now but I, I've now spent just so long in this world that I don't know how to move on and go to something else. Like I, I don't know how to exist outside of the world of like Lan, Anden, Hilo and Shay. I don't know if this is gonna put me in a huge slump. I am sad that um, I didn't give any of these books five stars and I still kind of stand by what I said about the special edition set, about how I don't regret purchasing this set. I think if I'd have read the series before they went on sale that I wouldn't have necessarily got it. But I did get some cool swag, like a couple of um, trinket dishes and also a set of Merwald bookmarks to sweeten the deal. And I am actually, I'm obsessed with Merwald bookmarks so that made it kind of worth it on its own. In terms of whatever-thon, this has covered three squares on the board. But I used this one to cover the free space. I used it for borrow a book because I know Cody also read it this month so it was on her TBR for July. And I also used it for the prompt blank colour on the cover because right at the beginning of this vlog at the beginning of the month I asked Curtis to pick a colour and I did actually film it so I will include this footage here. Okay so there is one prompt on the whatever thon bingo board that I cannot do because I need to randomly generate something to be able to do it so we have Curtis here. Do you want to give him a wave? Okay are you ready for your question? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Pick a colour. Blue. I like it. And the reason why I did it at the beginning of this vlog is because the books are like green, red, blue, so I knew that there was a good chance that he would pick a colour that's actually the main colour of this series. Oh my god, I don't think I have anything else to say. It's been a ride, guys. I don't think, have I ever filmed a vlog that's quite this long, as in like the time that it spanned? I don't think I have, but that brings us to the end of the Green Bond Saga vlog. I do have a video which I will link up here for you guys that has a whole bunch of series that I own all of the books in that are eligible for me to read in a video like this where I read all of the books in the series back to back and you guys can actually vote on that. So if you guys want to have a say in the next series that I pick up and read all in one vlog, feel free to go check out that video and leave your vote. And also of course a big thank you to Happy and Polly for sponsoring this video. Please don't forget that if you head into my description box and click on the link you can get yourself some cool little cat or dog accessories from Happy and Polly with a little bit of a discount if you use my code Becca. But aside from that guys, please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Oh you bite your friend like chocolate You say you will go when nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no